What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about Palantir and how ARK Invest owns around a million and a half shares of Palantir stock. Now, before we get into that, if you guys enjoy all this information in this video, please go down and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you're never late on any one of these videos that I put out and you can stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks and maybe even learn about a couple of new ones. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ARK, it's a massive investment firm led by Kathy Wood, and they have a lot of actively managed ETFs. Now, there's ARK-K, the innovation, ARK-Q, the autonomous technology and robotics ETF, ARK-W, the next generation internet ETF, and ARK-G, the genomic revolution ETF, and then finally, ARK-F, the fintech innovation ETF. Now, these ETFs have performed unbelievably this year a bunch of them are up multi hundreds of percent on the year which is amazing since we've had a very tumultuous year in the market now the s p 500 usually averages around eight to eleven percent every year and these arc etfs have absolutely smashed this and gone up multi hundreds of percents we can actually go and look at the buying history in the ARK ETFs for Palantir. If we go over here, we can take a look and see that in October, they were kind of averaging in. They had about 20,000 shares at around the $9, $10 mark, slowly increasing their position. And then on November 13th, bought around a million, million shares worth of Palantir and have been steadily increasing their position through the month of November and December. Now, this is very good for the average investor since ARK is such a successful, actively traded investment firm. If they are holding on to their shares throughout the end of the year and not taking profits, we can see that this number is not really going down. They have a lot of faith in this company which means that we probably should as well. Palantir has been very active over the past couple months and has gotten $175 million worth of government contracts. Now, about 50% of Palantir's yearly revenue as all government contracts, we can assume that they are doing about double that. And this is reflected in the increase in share price, especially for what the contracts are for. Now, if we go over here, we can take a look and see that the Army Vantage reaffirms the Palantir partnership with a $114 million agreement. And as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, this deal was originally for $458 million with a guaranteed base year and then three option years. This deal was signed in December 2019. It is now December 2020, and the Army has renewed their deal with Palantir for an additional $114 million. Now, this is very good since the U.S army has a lot of faith in the data analytics and predictive analytics power that palantir can give them in order to make very good decisions so investors should have a lot of confidence in this company as well the second deal that palantir received was from the fda and this was to power drug review and inspections to come out with new drugs and pandemic treatments palantir was also a part of operation warp speed which has been a driving factor in why the stock has gone up so much as well. Now, on the day that this was released, the shares were up 12%, which we can see that these deals are driving the stock up an immense amount. Now, the next one is Palantir signed a deal with the UK's National Health Service, and this was worth $31.5 million for a two-year contract, enabling them to roll out the vaccine program and detect emerging hotspots, as well as manage the equipment that is supplied to the medical facilities. Now, for the vaccine, they're most likely going to be determining how effectively to roll it out, just as we can see right here. Now, basically what this means is that they're going to see who are the most susceptible people to get this virus and the most susceptible people to come down with very harsh symptoms and get the vaccine to those people as fast as possible. They are also going to be helping to detect emerging hotspots so they can quickly shut down that area in quarantine to make sure the spread stops. And as we saw in New York, in the United States, a lot of the medical facilities have been overrun and they've been running out of PPE equipment. Now, this technology is going to allow the NHS to manage where the supplies are going and make sure the hospitals and treatment facilities have enough equipment, as well as making sure that they send patients to the right facility that has the capacity for them. 
Now, with all of these deals that Palantir has been receiving, you would think the stock would have gone up maybe even a thousand percent, but that's just not the case. If we go over and take a look at the chart, we can see that in October, it was trading for around $9, which is where ARK began to start purchasing, and we can see that it went all the way up to $29. Now, when a stock runs up this much, large institutions are going to want to take profits and are basically going to say that the stock is overextended at the current time because stocks are really not supposed to run up this much. Now, what really happened in this case that sent the share prices falling so much is that Morgan Stanley downgraded the company. Now, this is no fault of Palantir as a fundamental company, but they saw that the company was trading at a significant premium compared with its peers, also stating that the stock has more than doubled since it went public September 30th. Palantir has something very significant on its horizon as well. Now, the lockup period for their shares is going to be expiring pretty soon. Now, essentially what this means is that when a, sh in a company IPOs, a lot of the shares of the C-suite, the high-level employees, the original investors, and some of the lower-level employees that were granted shares are held and locked, and they cannot sell these shares until a specified date. Now, the reason for this is because a lot of people create a lot of wealth on IPO day, and if these individuals wanted to sell all of their shares, they would create such a massive volatility swing in the underlying stock that most likely the stock price would fall through the floor, and that's because the supply of shares would way outweigh the demand. And then down here, we can see that the lockup period is expected co to continue until the start of the third trading day following the date of public disclosure of Palantir's financial results for the year ending December 31st, 2020. Now, I've seen a couple people say that the lockup period is expiring on December 30th, but that is just not the case. What's actually going to happen is it's going to be three days after their next earnings report. And now that's predicted to be February 11th, and that would mean that the lockup period would expire on February 14th, so we could see a large selling pressure in Palantir on that day. So that is something to watch out for. You can go watch one of my other videos that I will link, and you can see what strategies you can use to protect your shares if you own them, or a way to play this actual event. If we go back and look at the chart for Palantir, we can see that it is not having a very strong week right now. It started the week at around $28 and has fallen all the way to $24.96, as you can see right here. This is most likely a result of institutions selling prior to the end of the year. The stock has run up so much, and if the large institutions were hard holding very large positions, they're going to want to get out and rebalance their portfolios. Say Palantir made up 2% of one of these large institutions' portfolios. If it triples, it is now about 6% of their portfolio, and that makes it overweight and they don't really like that. They like to be very diversified, so they're going to sell off some of these shares in order to have more balance in their portfolios. Now, I don't think this is really any cause for concern long-term for Palantir. I think this company is gonna have a lot of success mainly because of all of the government contracts that they've been getting. If they can start to get some more private companies, some big names on their balance sheet for revenue, we could see this company go all the way up to 100 within the next year or two years. That's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the information I had for you, please go down and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and comment down below your thoughts of what you think is going to happen to Palantir in the next year.